The Twitter takeover has pretty much changed everything around the social media platform. But if we're being honest, that's exactly what you'd expect when you let Elon Musk take over every single thing. And while there have already been quite a few controversies, as if he wasn't the king of all controversies anyway, everyone's talking about his war on the media. In this video, we're going to tell you everything you need to know. So, stay tuned. First off, Musk restores the Twitter accounts of journalists. Yep, all of the journalists who had their accounts suspended for a day finally got them back. And if you didn't know already, all of this happened over a controversy over publishing public data about the billionaire's plane. And let's just say the reinstatements came in right after the unprecedented suspensions triggered some stinging criticism from advocacy groups, government officials, and even a bunch of journalism organizations from different parts of the world. In fact, some even went as far as saying that the microblogging platform was jeopardizing press freedom. After that, Musk let the public decide what they wanted. And for that, he put up a poll on Twitter to decide when he should unsuspend those accounts, either immediately or in the next seven days. As expected, 58.7% of Twitter users voted now, after which the Twitter CEO did exactly what most of the people agreed on and restored those accounts immediately. And if you take a look at the list of suspended accounts, you're going to find journalists from CNN, The New York Times, The Washington Post, you name it. Following up, there are still some concerns after the reinstatement. Now, while every single one of them is reinstated now, the United Nations human rights chief still seems to have a few concerns. Volker Turk, the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights, took to Twitter to say the social media platform is responsible for respecting human rights. And since Musk is the Twitter CEO now, he should commit to making decisions based on publicly available policies that respect free speech, and nothing less than that. Although, if we remember correctly, hasn't Musk been one of the advocates for free speech anyway? With that said, Donnie O'Sullivan, a CNN reporter whose account made it to the list of suspended and reinstated accounts, said that he still wasn't able to tweet on the platform. Why? Well, it seems like the platform's still demanding the journalist to delete one of his posts first before he can make another one. In response, he's ready to appeal. On top of that, officials from Germany, France, Britain, and the European Union had also condemned the suspensions earlier. In fact, the episode, which was labeled Thursday Night Massacre by a well-known security researcher, seems to have become the latest piece of evidence of Musk. It shows the Twitter CEO, who, by the way, sees himself as a free speech absolutist, is instead eliminating speech and uses he doesn't like personally. Quite the contradiction, don't you think? And the critics are ready to dig deeper. Not to mention, let's not forget the massive layoffs after Musk's takeover. If anything, that was one of the first few drastic steps he took after the $44 billion takeover. In fact, it was quite the dramatic start to something like this. And while we thought that it would end at that, some sources familiar with the matter reported that there had been further layoffs in Twitter's engineering department sometime in December. On top of that, the employees impacted by this had already worked for the part of the company that literally kept the social media platform running. Adding to that, they were told about this sudden decision via email. While we're at it, shares in Tesla, which by the way is the electric car maker that Musk also leads, dropped 4.7% a few days ago. In fact, it also ended up being their worst weekly loss ever since March 2020. As for investors, let's just say they're more and more concerned about Twitter being a new distraction for the billionaire on top of the slowing global economy. Not the best combination if you ask us. Having said that, Melissa Fleming, head of communication for the United Nations took it to Twitter to talk about how she was deeply disturbed by these suspensions. In fact, she also mentioned media freedom being the foundation of democratic societies, saving the public from harmful disinformation, and considering that, it shouldn't be played with. On top of that, the German Foreign Office also warned that the ministry had a problem with decisions that were jeopardizing press freedom on the social media platform. Coming up, here's how it all started in the first place. If you've been living under a rock, we're here to rewind and take you back to where it all started. First, a disagreement was all it took to start the suspensions. If we're being specific, it was over a Twitter account called Elon Jet, which basically tracked Musk's private plane, and it wasn't based on any hacker-related stuff. Instead, the account just used all the publicly available information they could find. Clearly, it didn't take long for Musk to suspend the account on the social media platform, and while he was at it, he also suspended a bunch of other accounts tracking private jets. But here's the main issue. The Twitter CEO did all that right after his previous tweet mentioned that he wasn't going to suspend Elon Jet in the name of free speech. So, seeing this level of contradiction publicly was quite shocking for most people. Adding to that, it didn't take long for Twitter to change its privacy policy and prohibit any sort of sharing of live location information. And soon enough, a number of journalists
journalists from different publications, including the New York Times, the Washington Post, and even CNN, were all suspended from Twitter without any notice. Up next, Musk's contradiction and sudden decisions continue to be a concern. In an email to Reuters overnight, Twitter's head of trust and safety, Ella Irwin, mentioned that the team had already manually reviewed every single account that violated their new privacy policy. Along with that, Irwin also attached direct links to the Elon Jet account. And while the focus seemed to be on journalist accounts only, the email ensured that the policy was applied equally to every single Twitter user, whether they have a journalist or non-journalist account. On top of that, the Society for Advancing Business Editing and Writing also said, Twitter's decisions have violated the spirit of the First Amendment and the principle that social media platforms will allow the unfiltered distribution of information that is already in the public square. As for Musk, he accused the journalists of posting his real-time location, which, for him, amounts to providing assassination court coordinates for his family. On top of that, he also appeared briefly in a Twitter Spaces audio chat that was also hosted by journalists. And as expected, it didn't take long before it turned into a debate on whether or not the suspended reporters who exposed the billionaire's real-time location violated Twitter's policy. On the other hand, Musk's policy is simple. As he said himself, if you dox, you get suspended. End of story. If anything, that was his consistent response to every single question about it. Up next, is Elon Musk's Twitter takeover increasing hate speech? That's pretty much the burning question on everyone's mind nowadays. On top of that, we've also got the number to prove it. Plus, his last few political statements, all of the missteps we're seeing right now, and his plans for the platform are quite debatable for many people. But right now, let's talk numbers before we get further into it. As of now, Twitter has seen about a 500% increase in the use of the N-word, and this was literally in the 12-hour window right after the billionaire's Twitter takeover. On top of that, within a few weeks after that, tweets with the word Jew had increased fivefold compared to before the takeover. In fact, tweets with the most engagement were just overly anti-Semitic, to say the least. And while we're at it, there has also been a dramatic increase in misogynistic and transphobic language, and this surge in hate speech seems to have been linked to a bunch of trolling campaigns. Now, people need answers. So, in response to these reports, Yoel Roth, who by the way is the former head of safety and integrity at Twitter, posted an entire thread. And if you go give it a read, you'll see it details how most of this hate speech actually comes in from about 300 in authentic accounts. Speaking of which, even if it's coming from a few troll accounts, let's not forget how these users not only feel empowered by Musk's takeover, but also protected. Finally, Musk's Twitter takeover has been quite controversial. It's just one issue after the next. Frankly, we don't see a compromise. In fact, he started off with massive layoffs after he fired at least 50% of Twitter employees. And as we mentioned, it doesn't seem like the layoffs have stopped. On top of that, he also fired a bunch of longtime executives, including CFO Ned Segal, CEO Parag Agrawal, the company's general counsel Sean Edgett, Chairman Brett Taylor, and even the head of legal policy, trust and safety, Vijaya Gade. If anything, his decisions led people to question him because frankly, if you're firing a bunch of people who are pretty much responsible for the social media platform's success, what's your plan? One thing we know about the billionaire is that he's pretty ambitious, to say the least, but sometimes we're not too sure about what he's doing. And let's say if we were to trust his plan for a minute, think about the upsurge in hate speech, the suspension and reinstatement of Twitter accounts, and a bunch of other stuff that seems to be based on nothing but his personal dislikes. They're definitely not the results you'd want or expect after the takeover. Having said that, while only time will tell how all of this pans out, critics don't think it's looking too good. That's a wrap for this video. What's your take on Elon Musk's war on media? Do you think his decisions are affecting Twitter users' freedom of speech? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.